Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at trigonometric functions at any angle. So we're going to let theta be an angle in standard position with a point x, y that's on the terminal side of theta. What we know is that the length of the radius, so the radius would be from 0, 0 up to x, y, it's going to have a length of r, and r is determined using the Pythagorean theorem as the square root of x squared plus y squared. Based on this, what are the six trigonometric functions of angle theta. So in this case, we want to look at sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, cosecant of theta, the reciprocal of sine, secant of theta, the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent theta, the reciprocal of tangent. So based on this, remember what we want to do, or how we can think about it, we think about creating a right triangle with that segment r down to the x-axis. So we're going to create a right triangle by dropping a perpendicular. And now you can see we have this right triangle in here. Well, based on this, and in this case we would look at um, our reference angle, which would be right there, theta hat. Based on the reference angle, sine would be the opposite, so it would be this here, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which in this case is r. So we would find sine by doing y over r. Cosine that would be adjacent to theta hat, which is the x value, would be x over r. And tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, would be r, uh, excuse me, y over x. For the reciprocals, we can just look at the reciprocal of sine, which would be r over y, secant, r over x, and cotangent, x over y. So we want to make sure we know either you want to memorize these or you want to know how you can create it in the coordinate plane by using theta hat as needed. Okay, what are the signs of each trigonometric function in each quadrant? When we're looking at right triangle tri trigonometry, we don't have to worry about the signs because everything's positive, that everything about a triangle is positive. But when we're in the coordinate plane, x can be positive or negative, and y can be positive or negative. So we wanna keep this in mind. So the thing about uh, in the coordinate plane is that r will always be positive. The radius will always have a positive measure, always, always, always. So really the signs of the trigonometric functions are dependent on the signs of x and y. So what we need to remember is that sine and cosecant deal with y. So we need to focus on the sine of y, and that's going to tell us whether sine is positive or negative in each quadrant, and therefore cosecant, since it's going to have the same sign. In quadrant one, everything's positive. So we would have positive over positive. So sine is positive in quadrant one. So we're gonna, let's see, we're gonna say positive and negative, negative. And here we have quadrant one. Over here in quadrant two, we have negative positive. In quadrant two, y is positive, which means sine will be positive in quadrant two. In quadrant three, we have negative, negative y is negative, therefore sine and cosecant are negative in quadrant 3. And lastly, quadrant 4, we have positive negative, y is negative, so it's going to be negative in quadrant 4. Okay, so it's only positive in quadrants 1 and 2. What about cosine? Well, cosine is very dependent on the sine of x. So x in quadrant 1, looking back to the, the previous picture, x would be positive, so therefore cosine is positive in quadrant one. In quadrant two over here, x is negative, which means cosine is negative, so we're gonna put two down here. In quadrant three, x is negative, therefore cosine and uh, secant are negative. And in quadrant four, co uh, x is positive, therefore cosine and secant are positive. Last but not least, we're looking at tangent and cotangent. Tangent and cotangent are dependent on both x and y, right? Because tangent is y over x and cotangent is x over y. So it depends on what the two signs are as a fraction. So when they're both positive, that's positive over positive, tangent's gonna be positive in quadrant one. In quadrant two, we have negative positive, so that's negative divided by positive. It's going to be negative in quadrant two. In quadrant three, where we have negative and negative, that would be negative divided by negative. That means that tangent is positive in quadrant three. And lastly, in quadrant four, we have positive, negative, a negative divided by positive is negative. So tangent will be negative in quadrant four. It's important that we know these. It's 
you can always figure it back out based on creating the triangle and seeing you know what does it relate to but it's good to know this and one way that I always remember learning this is you just set up a coordinate plane and you use a mnemonic device all students take calculus and this tells you what's positive in each quadrant so in quadrant one all three are positive the A stands for all so everything's positive in quadrant two the only thing that's positive is sine in quadrant three the only thing that's positive is tangent and in quadrant four the only thing that's positive is cosine so we want to make sure that we we get this, it makes sense, and we can move on. Okay, so we're given a point, and that point lies on the terminal side of some angle in standard position. We're going to plot the point, and we're going to what might help is to actually create the angle too, and then we want to determine the exact values of the six trigonometric functions of the angle theta. When it says the exact values, that means that you shouldn't plug it in the calculator, so if you have like the square root of six, we don't want an approximation for the square root of six, you would leave the square root of six as part of your answers. And so it potentially means we're gonna to have to rationalize denominators. But let's see, we have three, four is gonna be up here. So the angle, remember it starts at the origin, would go up there would be the terminal side, and this would be the initial side. And we can look at, we're gonna look at this angle here. So what we know, we create a little right triangle, is that this is three and this is four. What we're missing is the radius of this, so we can figure that out. Remember, the radius is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So in this case, it would be 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 9 plus 16 is 25, and the square root of 5 is 5. This is a special right triangle called a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Now that we have the three pieces, so we can label, so 3 is x, 4 is y, and 5 is r. If you don't already have this committed to memory, then you might want to write it down until it makes sense. So sine of theta is y over r, which would be 4 over 5. Cosine of theta is x over r, which is 3 over 5. And tangent of theta is y over x, which will be 4 over 3. Now I notice that sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive, which they should be because that terminal side is in quadrant 1 where everything's positive. Looking at our reciprocal functions, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Cosecant of theta will be r over y, which will be 5 over 4. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. Secant of theta is going to be r over x, which is 5 over 3. And the reciprocal of tangent of theta is cotangent of theta, which will be x over y, and that will be 3 fourths. So there's the six trigonometric functions as exact values. Our next example, we have the point 5, negative 2. So 5, negative 2. This guy is terminating in quadrant 4, so we might recall the only thing that's positive in quadrant 4 is cosine of the, the main functions. Let's draw our angle so we have an, a sense of what this looks like. Ooh, something like that. Pretend like that's a straight line. And there's theta. Okay, so what information do we know? We know that this is negative 2 and that is corresponding to y. We know that this piece here is 5, and this is corresponding to x, and again, we're missing the radius. So we're going to figure out the value of the radius by doing the square root of 5 squared plus negative 2 squared, right? Because it's r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So then we get the square root of 25 plus 4. Be careful, especially if you're going to use a calculator, which I don't know why you would need to, but if it's a crutch and you need to, that's fine. Um, but negative 2 quantity squared is 4, not negative 4. So we end up with the square root of 29, not the square root of 21. And now we know that r is equal to the square root of 29. We're going to use all of this to write the six trigonometric functions. So first, sine of theta. And again, sine should be negative, right? It's y over r. Well, y is negative 2, and r is the square root of 29. So we do end up with a negative. Uh, we also have an irrational denominator, so we're going to fix that by multiplying by root 29 over root 29 and we're going to get negative 2 root 29 over 29. Next we have cosine of theta, that's going to be x over r. Uh, this one should be positive because we're in quadrant 4, and x is 5, r is the square root of 29. While it is positive, we do have the issue that we have that irrational denominator. Let's rationalize by multiplying by root 29 over root 29, giving us 5 root 29 over 29. The last of the three main functions, we have tangent, which is y over x, 
this is going to be negative 2 over 5. Woo, we don't have to rationalize anything. Yay. Looking at the next three, we have our reciprocal functions, cosecant of theta. I'm going to go either back to this, or I might just use the um, graph itself, which will be r over y. Since r is uh, in the numerator this time, I'm, I don't, I don't want to use the final answer for sine. I want to use the original answer. And we end up with the square root of 29 over negative 2. You can leave it like this. Or you can put the negative in front. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do the same thing with secant, the reciprocal of cosine. Secant of theta is going to be r over x. So I either want to go back to the original uh, values I had for cosine, or I want to re refer back to the graph, where I have root 29 over 5. The reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, and cotangent of theta is given by y over x, and this will be 5 over negative 2, or negative 5 halves. So this would be the six trigonometric functions for the point 5, negative 2. Our last example, we're looking at negative 3, negative 1, so that's going to be down here. We want to make a nice straight line from the origin to there. So here's theta. Whoops, there's theta. And let's see what we know about this. So we know we have negative 3 here, which is corresponding to x. I have negative 1 here, which is corresponding to y, right? Which we can also just pull from the point itself. We are missing our radius. So the radius is going to be the square root of negative 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, and negative 1 squared is 1. So we end up with the square root of 10. Since it terminates in quadrant 3, do you remember which trig function will be positive? It will be tangent. So sine and cosine will both be negative since both x and y are negative. Tangent will be positive since it's going to be negative over negative. Okay, let's see what we have. So sine of theta is y over r, which will be negative 1 over the square root of 10. We want to rationalize this. So we're going to do root 10 over root 10, and that's going to give us negative root 10 over 10. For cosine of theta, that's going to equal x over r. This will be negative 3 over the square root of 10. We need to rationalize, so we're going to multiply by root 10 over root 10, and that gives us negative 3 root 10 over 10. Once we rationalize the denominator, you do want to make sure we can't simplify with the integer that was already in the numerator. We can't, so we can move on. Lastly, we have tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is y over x, and in this case that would be negative 1 over negative 3. A negative, divide, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so we're going to rewrite it as 1 third. Moving on to our reciprocal functions, we have cosecant of theta, which is r over y. And again, we either want to go back to the original or back to the diagram itself, because the r is uh, the irrational part, which will now be in the numerator. This is going to give me the square root of 10 over negative 1. We can clean this up. That's the negative square root of 10. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, and that's going to be r over x. This is going to be the square root of 10 over negative 3, which we can just leave like that. And lastly, cotangent of theta will be x over y, and that's going to give us 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. So this has been a demonstration of evaluating the trigonometric functions at any angle.